Yay! Yay! All right, uh, let's start in with some rotational dynamics. Uh, let's see how rotational motion is treated um, and makes things spin. So uh, first of all, let's try to compute uh, a quantity that's going to be really useful for us, which is the net torque on an object. Okay, so suppose I got a rod and the rod is uh, pinned over here at this end. Um, and then I got two forces acting on it. So there's F1 acting at that point uh, at 30 degrees with respect to the rod. And then there's F2 that acts out on the end. Um, and so I want to know what's going to happen to the rod. Which way is it going to spin, uh, if any? So in order to do it, what we're going to want to do is to find the net torque on the rod. Okay, so uh, what's torque? Remember, torque... Torque is the analog um, of rotational force, right? That's another way to say torque is rotational force. And rotational force is rotational mass times rotational acceleration, right? So I can say it's I times alpha for this object, um, which is what we're going to do. And, and really, just like we did with Newton's laws, what we're going to say is the, the net torque, the sum of all the torques that are acting, um, is going to be I times alpha, how the thing is going to uh, accelerate. But to find each individual torque that's acting due to the force, we'll do this. But first, uh, let's find each torque due to a force. Okay, so how do we do it? Uh, what we do is we say the torque is R cross F. So F is the force that's applied, and then R, that vector, is from the rotation axis. So here it's from the left-hand end where the thing is going to rotate uh, to the point where the force is applied, right? So if F1 uh, is being applied over here uh, at this point, three meters away from the axis, um, then R1 goes from the axis to that point. And then for F2 is being applied out here. So that's where R2 points. All right. So torque one is going to be R1 cross F1. And remember how cross products work. That's just going to be RF sine theta. This is the form of the cross product that we want because we know um, the magnitudes of those vectors and the angle between the vectors, right? So we can compute the torque this way. So uh, R1, F1, sine theta. And what is that theta? Theta is the angle between R and F. Uh, so let's see how to figure that out. Okay, so R1, the magnitude of R1 uh, is 3. The magnitude of F1 is 12. And then sine theta. All right, let, uh, let me draw it over here. Whoops. Um, R1 is pointed that way. Right? And F1 is pointed that way. So what's the angle between the vectors? How we find that, let me draw it better. How we find that is make them, remember you can slide vectors around, right? So make them start in the same place. So here's my R1 and then my F1 is going back like that. So the angle between the vectors, if they both start in the same place, the angle between the vectors is going to be that, right? And so here, this is going to be sine, in this case, that's 150. And the sine of 150 is the same as uh, sine of 30, right? Which is like a half. So this is just going to be 18 Newton meters. Okay. And the units are right, right? R times F. It should just be a Newton times a meter. Okay, there we go. Or, in other words, uh, that's a positive 18 and the other way that you can indicate it is either with positive or negative. That's fine. Uh, a lot of times what you'll see is that this is called a counterclockwise torque. In other words, if this were the only thing acting, um, that F1 is going to try to make that rod rotate counterclockwise around the pin, right? Uh, counterclockwise 
um, spins are defined to be positive. And yet another way to think about it is if you do your right hand rule, uh, R cross F, the right hand rule R cross F is gonna be something pointed out of the page. Um, and out of the page is the positive Z axis, and so that's positive. So there's several different ways to see it. Okay, uh, how about torque two? Torque two is just gonna be R2 cross F2. Um, okay, so that's gonna be R2, F2, sine of the angle between those guys, right? Sine of theta. So what's this gonna be? Uh, R2 is gonna be eight. I'll leave the units off. F is eight sine of theta. Okay, so once again, I got my R2 is going that way, but then F2 is going that way, and you have to be a little bit careful. What's the angle between these vectors? You might wanna say that's 90, but it's not, right? It's like minus 90. We always take angles to be in the counterclockwise direction. Again, positive direction. So how do I get from R2 over to F2? I gotta go all the way around there. That's like 270. So this is like the sine of 270. Uh, and that's going to be minus one. Okay, so this is going to be a minus 64 newton meters. Or it's minus 64, or you can just say 464 newton meters clockwise. Because F2, if left to its own devices, is going to want to make this thing spin clockwise. That's called, just by convention, that's a negative torque. Okay, so what's the net torque? I'm just gonna add the two together, um, just like adding force vectors. So the net torque is just gonna be um, 18 minus 64, uh, what's that, like minus 48 Newton meters, or 48 Newton meters uh, clockwise. So the net effect of these things, the net effect of these torques is that if both of them are applied, this thing is going to want to spin clockwise. And that's why you have to be a little bit careful because look, F2 is less than F1, right? But in the torque sense, F2 kind of wins because it's applied farther away. Uh, just like if you want to have more uh, twisting force applied to a, a bolt or something like that, you get a longer uh, wrench because that's an added torque. If you can apply your force farther away, uh, that's a higher twisting force, a higher torque. So even though F2 is less than F1, because it's applied farther away, um, the torque uh, applied by F2, that torque two is gonna win. And so this thing is gonna move, that's gonna rotate clockwise. Um, and then if we want, we can figure out the rate at which this thing is gonna start spinning um, because now, this, like we had up at the top, this sum of the torques is going to be I alpha. So the, this thing is going to start accelerating uh, at a rate of uh, what? That's going to be minus 48 uh, divided by I. What's the moment of inertia of this thing? It's a rod, right? One third ML squared. Um, and I mean, we could just put some numbers on it if we want. Um, what did I use here? Let's say uh, mass of the rod is five kilograms and the length of the rod, we already said was like eight meters. So if you put those things in there, what you're gonna get uh, is like minus 0.45 radians per second squared. Okay, so that's how we can figure out the angular acceleration of this thing as it starts out. 